sell a million dollars online by building a durable business that will print profit for you for years to come. Let's go ahead and jump into this. So we can see this diagram right here. This is what I believe that everybody should work towards. And I wanna go over this because I think it's important not only to build a seven figure income, but build a durable seven figure income and make sure that you have the systems in play to not only handle the different things the marketplace is gonna throw at you, but also handle the different shifts that are bound to happen. And that's one mistake that I made early on is one of the first seven figure companies that I ever built. Um, I only built it off of one way of getting clients, one way of getting customers and that one way stopped working and the business, you know, obviously felt that because I only had one mechanism. So now whenever I build anything, I'm thinking with everything I'm about to show you over the next, you know, few videos here. Okay. So number one, um, just to let you know that this system doesn't have to be implemented immediately. Everything I'm about to show you can be built over time, but it does take into consideration, you know, the different things that I believe every great business that's gonna, you know, net someone a million dollars online should have, okay? Number two, um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and walk you through this step by step. There's gonna be different questions that you have, but you know, one thing that I, I really uh, try to do whenever I'm trying to problem solve is I'll work from the ideal scene backwards. So for me, this is an ideal scene that I would say somebody should work towards. So then you kind of know what you know you are going to aim to build and now whether you're on step one or step 10 it doesn't really matter just having an idea of this increasing your awareness is going to do you a lot of good you know in the long term and the short term okay so let's go ahead and uh, jump into this uh section by section let's go ahead and do a big picture overview of this and then we'll go ahead and you know dive into each area so i divided this up into a few different areas um number one we have the actual ways that you're going to bring attention to your business, which we have paid, we have organic, and we have referrals. Okay, number two, we have what you're going to drive the traffic towards. So are we gonna drive it towards you know, a lead magnet, are we gonna drive it towards, you know, free content, right? So we have the actual, you know, opt-in that allows someone to open the door to your world and now they're in your ecosystem. And that's really what this is about is building not just, you know, one way to get clients or one mechanism or acquisition system, but it's about building an ecosystem that whether somebody buys today or in 90 days or 60 days or, or, or next year, you know, we're gonna go ahead and be the most likely option for them to go ahead and uh, you know decide to do business when they are ready, okay? Next up, right here in the blue, we have the actual sales process. So sales, so we have getting attention, we have you know the thing that they're gonna go ahead and see and how they're gonna opt in to, to you know say, hey, I'm interested in you know learning more about what your company offers. Then we actually have the sales system and then we have the follow-up system. And those are the, the main categories that would, you know, those are the main categories that are going to determine if someone's actually going to be able to build a successful, not only seven figure, but multi seven figure company, um, and do it in a really profitable way in a way that's extremely durable as well, which I think is very, very important. So let's go ahead and jump into this. Let's go ahead and kick this off with the first part, which is getting more traffic and getting people to know about your business. Whether you're doing paid ads, organic, or you're you know, getting referrals, you can actually build out systems that make it very predictable for you to get a certain amount of opportunities. And ideally, a durable business has all of these working. So number one, we have paid ads. Paid ads, one of the biggest mistakes that most people make is they underestimate the amount of energy and effort it takes to actually you know, test out ads. They advertise a product or service that doesn't have any demand in the marketplace. They also go ahead when they, let's just say that they did know something that you know had demand, not only are they not testing the enough ad ads, uh, enough creatives, but they're also not high quality. So they're just really, no matter what, that cost per a click that it takes to get someone to take action is gonna be way too high and the numbers just don't work out. Okay, so here's what I like to do, just an overview is I like to use something called the cinema formula. This is something I made up f for myself and a formula that I follow to make sure that I'm testing enough um, advertising creatives. So here's what that looks like, cinema, controversial, information, new, 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 emotional, motivational, authoritative. 
authority. So I'll, I'll, I'll make ads from these different frames. I'll do an ad that's controversial an ad that's, you know, information. And then, you know, once you do this uh, for long enough, you start mixing those different things together. And I like to use that to never run out of creative ideas for the ads. Okay. The other big thing with, you know, testing to see if there's demand is knowing the marketplace that you're in and seeing who's actually advertising and who's spending money on ads and knowing that, Hey, th there is actually companies that are making cash flow from an offer like this. Okay. There's other ways to see demand as well. You could also look up search volume uh, and see how many people are actually searching for what you're selling. That's another way to do it as well. Okay. So that's advertising. I believe that you know, if somebody really gets this down, it is extremely powerful because you can, you know, basically flip a switch. And if you know, you're going to break even or even make money on the ads, you know, you can scale. And, and, and I know that a lot of people, you know, um, look down on ads and they say, Hey, you should only do organic, but I'm going to tell you this right now. I know multiple business owners that do one, two, three million a month and they all run ads. Okay. Ads are only bad if you're bad at running ads. If you're good at running ads and you make money from running ads, you should run ads. Point being is it is a skill set that's worth learning because once you have this skill set, you could rapidly jump into not only the, the company you're in, but I believe that it's worth learning because you can jump into other industries and test the marketplace out. Like for example, if I was stranded on a desert island tomorrow with a computer and I had to, you know, build a new company and, you know, assuming I had some marketing budget, I could run ads and see if it works and see how the marketplace responds from it. And I can make money without having to go the other route, which is organic. Uh, so that is the second way to get clients. And, you know, I do have a few, uh, friends and, and just throughout my network and, and even clients that have primarily relied on organic. Eventually one day they do stack ads on top of it and they amplify organic with ads, but let's just say organic only same concept. You can use the cinema framework to make different types of content that is going to get attention. And you, you know, the big thing is, um, with organic is there's content that you can make that gets the most views, which will you know, maybe it'll, it'll get, you know, a million views or 2 million views or 3 million views. And, you know, depending on how that's made, yeah, maybe it brings people in that buy something, but you can also go ahead and apply frameworks from running ads and direct response marketing to organic content and make content that will really gravitate towards and help your ideal customer and client out. And, and you could apply the same principles. So with organic, the thing that I like to set up is a machine that prints out X amount of pieces of content every single week, every single month. And I'm able to go ahead and deploy those across the different, um, social media channels. And, and you could do this through your personal brand page. And, and that's one way to do it. You could also do it through a company page. It is possible to do it that way as well. Um, either way though, it's possible to even create a team where you actually have an editor, a script writer, a copywriter. Um, you actually have somebody that's a social media manager that's deploying, you know, this organic content and you could turn this in a machine that's, you know, running, you know, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. And, and, you know, you're able to really go out there and, um, apply quantity and getting enough volume out there to, you know, get, get the, um, lead flow that you need for your business. So that's definitely a route you can go. The last route, which is also very, very powerful. Um, especially if you're working with clients that are, um, high ticket or just, you know, mid ticket is, is through referrals. Most, the, most people will go ahead and do referrals in a way where it's like, yeah, I get referred clients and it's, it's sporadic, right? You could actually set up systems for referrals where you actually have, you know, different ways to go about this. And, and this is what I would go ahead and, you know, do if I really wanted to build, you know, work off referrals, which is also going to be, um, uh, cost effective, right? I'm not gonna, I'm not technically spending money. I would actually recommend putting an incentive for the people that refer you business, but we have these different ways to actually go ahead and get referrals. So number one, we have, you know, just referral partners, just people that send referrals and you know, it's sporadic, right? We have, um, integration partners where you actually have people that have a business that is complimentary, or maybe it's even in another industry, but you know, your product relates to their customers and you actually integrate on the back end so that every time they get a new customer, you're actually 
getting a lead because you know you have a, a free offer or you have something special that you do for their customers and clients. That one's really, really powerful. Affiliate partners. Affiliate partners could be like a referral partner, but affiliate partner is somebody that's actively going out there and promoting your business where this is actually a real stream of income for them. So you could actually have professional affiliates promoting your product. Um, network partners, those are um, also very powerful. Like for example, one of the clients that I work with is in a network and in that network, it is all dentists and inside of that network, there's one person that does life insurance, one person does health insurance, one person does accounting, one person does bookkeeping, one person does marketing. And there's like a network that he's plugged into that feeds him consistent business. So point being is with all of these strategies, you want to make it systematic into the point where you are driving leads and, 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 and numbers and opportunities with predictability. And that's the principle that I would apply to every single type of advertising or, you know, um, thing that we're using. And that's the thing that I would apply to every single mechanism right here that we're going to use to get more attention in our business. All right. So the next piece of the puzzle is having different types of opt-ins or finding different ways to actually get people to reach for your business. So assuming you have the traffic and the intention coming in, what are the different ways that you're going to actually get these people to reach and say, Hey, I want to do, I want to learn more about what you got going on. Right. Um, most people will rely on only one mechanism to get somebody to reach. And here's the thing is this, when you're first getting started, you're going to do one, right? But a lot of times people lock themselves in a box where they're only trying to make one work and they need to do a different one for their business that's gonna convert well. So you might as well have the ability to rapidly test all of these. And for us, we like to actually use these different mechanisms to get somebody to reach and say, hey, I wanna learn more about what you going on. You got going on. So for us, we like to use all three of these different mechanisms to get someone to reach and say, hey, I like what you got going on. Remember, we're, we're trying to build something that's not only extremely profitable, but extremely durable as well. So number one, we have loss leaders. If you look at loss leaders, this is something that has been used and it's been used a lot in some of the most successful businesses in the world. Um, the first time this was really used was with Gillette razors. And this concept is, hey, give somebody something to have them try out your product. And then when they go and, and, and you know, buy again, you know, they're going to, they're going to do it. And the, the second sale is easier than the first sale. So with Gillette razors, they have the razor blades, they have, you know, the replaceable, um, um, actual blades up top. They would give the razor blades away for, you know, virtually free for the first one. And then when somebody went to buy more razor blades, they, they would buy Gillette's because they, 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 they had to, that's what would work on it. So that's where they would make all their money. So you can use this as well with your high ticket product or service as well, where you actually have an introductory product or service that would allow someone to see like, Hey, I like working with this guy and, and I feel like they can really help me. Or I like working with this company. I feel like they could really help me. So for that, you basically focus on a specific problem. So for example, let's just say that I wanted to go ahead and I was working with dentists. I'll just use that as an example again. And I had a playbook that, you know, uh, a playbook along with, you know, a step-by-step -step series on exactly how to get 10 X the referrals. And the program was 297 or 497 or 97 bucks. That could be a loss leader where, Hey, I'm not really making money on it, but let's say that the dentist uses that information, gets a result with it. And they realize, well, what if I just had this person help me with all of my marketing? What would that look like? Right? So that's a loss leader lead magnet. Um, lead magnet is something where, you know, you could even combine this with the loss leader, but lead magnet is just you giving information to someone in exchange for their name, email, phone. There's nothing for sale, but you want to make the lead magnet very useful. Something that somebody could actually use and, and, and you know, they would consume it. So a lead magnet could be a checklist. It could also be a free course. It could be a, a booklet. It could be a, a PDF. It could be, it could be, um, a diagram or, or, or a map of, you know, uh, um, that's, um, like a workflow or a map of a certain process or system. Right. And this is specifically to get somebody to give you their information. Um, next up, we actually have leveraged content. So this right here, what I'm doing right here could be an example 
of leveraged content, but you could also have, you know, long form content on YouTube. It could even be podcasts, but it's content that gives somebody value and you're sharing information that could help them. And, um, you're able to actually have that content work for you, you know, on the back end of, of your marketing ecosystem where, where slowly, but surely they're getting an idea here or there from you. And as time goes on, they eventually realize like, man, I actually learned a lot and my awareness has increased and it's helped me do this. What if I just worked with this person to 10 X my business? What would, what would that do? What would that do? What would that look like? And, and they actually, you know, begin to build more trust and uh, rapport and affinity with you. Okay. So those are the different types of opt-ins when you're starting off, you could focus in on one of these, do whichever one feels right for you. You don't, you don't have to go ahead and do one or the other. The truth is this at the highest level, all of these work and you could use all of these for your business. Okay. Starting off, you can, you can go ahead and start off with whatever is going to be simplest for you. And a lot of times, a lot of business owners even have something that they could already use as a lead magnet, or maybe use as, you know, an old, you know, course or program, you know, that they, they already have, or maybe they have a service that's not really popular, but it's very profitable. That could be a, a, you know, a loss leader, right? So you can get creative here and the key is just start. But as time goes on, when you actually build out an ecosystem, you can utilize these different mechanisms to actually, you know, have somebody realize, Hey, this is the person to work with. You know, they may not respond to the first one or the second one, but the third one they do. Sales process. Once somebody comes into the ecosystem, a lot of people leave a lot of money on the table because they don't actually have a good sales process and a good sales team to pick up, you know, as much opportunity as possible. And this right here could actually save you. Like if you're not good at marketing and you don't have a really, you know, complex, you know, ecosystem to warm someone up, if you just have this piece down, you could do a million dollars. Okay. So sales process with that being said, uh, let's assume that you guys have high ticket service, high ticket offer. Maybe it's a course, maybe it's coaching, maybe it's consulting, something that's higher ticket. You want to have a sales process and this is the principles and the concepts that help us maximize our marketing dollars. It's by actually having two different subunits. One unit is going to go ahead and be appointment setters. The other unit is going to be the people actually doing the deals, right? Account executives, closers, whatever you want to call them. Right. But we have two different teams. And the other thing that we like to have is QC quality control, as well as an admin and, and the reason why I'm showing you this is because if you know kind of what you're working towards, is, you'll, you'll have an idea of how to build out, not just a, a seven figure sales team, but you can use these concepts to build an eight figure team and really scale your business. So for each one of these roles, we want to have these three things. We want to have stats. We want to have responsibilities. It could be a checklist. However you want to go ahead and show them like, Hey, this is what you have to do every day to do your job. And then you want to have policies, which are basically the rules that they should follow And each one of these roles here, whether it's the sales director, the sales manager, the setter manager, quality control, the, uh, admin assistant, all of them have those three things for their job. And when you do that, you basically have these subunits where every single day, you have an army of appointment setters that are going out there and they're doing all of the best practices to call every single lead that opted in every single lead that, you know, didn't book a call every single lead that didn't show up for an appointment, every single lead where it's been three, six months and they're following up with them. Every single person that, you know, got demo, but they didn't buy they're, they're basically going out there and they're nurturing every single lead that comes into your ecosystem. And the goal is to have them get in communication and get, a decision. Hey, do you have 10 or 15 minutes to check out what we're doing? Yes or no. And that, that is the target for them is, Hey, look, every single lead that we have, the goal is to get a decision if they're open to actually taking a look at it. And you know, on the other end, um, and th their final product, the thing that they're getting paid for is getting people to show up with some interest. Ideally, same thing with uh, closers here. So their final product is going through and running through the sales process where they're actually presenting an offer to everybody that jumps on a call with them or a zoom call, however you're doing it and to get a decision and follow all the best practices. And 
and their 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 final final product is getting someone to actually exchange money with the company you know for a service or a product right so i like to have these two different units um starting off if you only have closers or you only have appointment setters um, you're not really going to maximize every single opportunity that comes into your ecosystem. So I like to have both. And as time goes on, obviously not starting off, you eventually have a manager that's managing the appointment setters. You have a manager that's managing the closers. And then you actually have the sales director that's floating back in, um, back in between. Quality control, what they get, what they do is they're like the, um, the eyes and ears of the sales director. So what they're doing is they're listening to call recordings. They're looking through the appointments, the notes, and basically finding out points and they can let the sales director know and they could also pull people aside to do uh, training uh, with them to do coaching right the admin assistant um, we we use one because we have you know 40 sales reps and they're basically making sure that the statistics and you know all of their production um, tr all the production tracking everything's up to date and they're basically like um, an assistant to the uh, sales director, but also the quality control. And we have them do admin tasks, tasks that are very, very duplicatable and uh, things that uh, yeah, an admin can do. So the sales director, what are they doing if the quality control is listening to calls? They Their main job is to go and push production and make sure that the team's actually hitting their targets and quotas and holding them accountable to do that. That doesn't mean that they won't ever correct someone if there's something they're doing that's not in alignment with the sales process, but their main job is to get production and to push the team to hit their targets and quotas and to make sure that they are taking action on the right things, okay? So really when you build a team like this, um, you basically have a machine where you could throw them a lead and you know, hey, this thing's gonna get worked and if there is a deal to get done, we're gonna get a deal done. Um, with the sales process, very standard. So you have appointment setting, you know, what's that process to set appointments and the actual sales process. And then this is where a lot of the real magic happens is, you know, the next part, which we'll go ahead and cover in the next video. So goal with sales, sales team, my goal, whenever I build the company is to go ahead and have a sales team that's going to maximize and optimize every single opportunity that comes in the ecosystem. And by building this and working towards this, you're going to be able to not only do, you know, a million dollars, but you'll have the infrastructure to do a few million dollars and it'll be something that's happening, whether you're working on the business in the business or not, it's going to be a machine where there will be cash and deals and clients, you know, getting onboarded, whether you're there or not. All right, the last piece of the puzzle. Now let's assume that your sales reps don't follow up because a lot of the sales reps don't follow up today. And the problem with that is that 80% of the people that are going to buy from you aren't going to buy from you on the first call. They're going to buy from you three, six, even 12 months down the road. So you need to have a system for follow-up. You could depend on the sales reps to do it and they should be trained on how to follow up for three, six, 12, 12 months. That's something that we definitely preach and teach to our sales reps. But I've realized that if you only count on them to do that, <laughs> you're gonna be leaving a lot of money on the table. So you wanna build a system where you're actually following up with clients after that demo or after that presentation or that sales call and, and they don't buy. So you can do this through text, email, uh, even even you know phone calls as well. Obviously phone calls are gonna be with reps, but let's just you know kind of leave that one to the side right now. So email and text, I would do both of them and this 90 days, what it represents is like at the very minimum, have something that reaches out and gives value and continues to educate these people for at least 90 days. And this is where having your different lead magnets or different long leverage content, long form content, or having different, you know, loss later products, you know, comes into play because for that 90 days, you can introduce them to these other things that are value adds for them, give them small wins, quick wins, and the goal is, is when they're ready to buy, there's actually an image that pops up of your company, your sales rep at that time, and they decide, hey, I wanna go do business with you. So that's the goal of this, is to actually make it so that once they don't buy on that first call, you know, and the rep doesn't, you know, do a deal with them, you know, in the first, you know, one to two weeks later, you can set it up different ways. Like for example, for one of the offers that we run, we don't, trigger this until uh it's like 20 21 days or 22 days 
And the reason we do that is because we give, hey, you know, sales rep, all right, you want to go ahead and follow up with this guy. You have 22 days to do it. After that, we're going to go ahead and start offering them lower ticket products and services, offering them, you know, this different uh, content and whatnot. And in that 22 days, um, we actually have testimonials and case studies in one of the sequences. So you could do the same thing, right? You can get creative with this, but the point is you want to build out this system where if somebody doesn't buy, they automatically from the company are going to go ahead and get followed up with and get value to give them an increase in awareness, more realization so that, you know, when they are ready, they decide, Hey, I want to do business with you. So this is extremely important, um, in terms of, you know, the time, right? If 90 days seems overwhelming, do 30, you know, do, do two weeks, do three weeks, right? Start with whatever that is. And you can always add on to it as time goes on. But by doing this, you're going to be picking up and you can literally double your sales volume by just having this one thing in play. A lot of sales reps that work remotely or if they're doing high ticket sales for an offer or a service company, um, typically a lot of their deals come from deals that you know, came on the calendar that week. I've always found that a top performing rep can double their sales volume by actually doing follow-up. And it's the same exact thing for the company. If the company starts to implement follow-up systems, they also can go ahead and double their volume. And it's uh, very powerful when you do it this way because whether the sales rep does it or not, the company is gonna go ahead and follow up with them 